warm evening to you all. Welcome to the show. You are watching the Bidiyang Show. My name is Monica Kipto. We are at Hedaya Suits in Nakuru. Now, on this episode of Bidiyang, we talk about corporate training. What is corporate training? Do you need it? What are its advantages for any kind of business or career and for entrepreneurship? We have Eunice with us on the show. Say hello. Hello. How are you? Uh, she is a team leader at AGEM. Talk to us about your company. Okay, uh, thank you for this opportunity. Um, a Game Training and Consultancy is a corporate training and team building um, organization. That's what we do. And so, corporate training is basically uh, the skill of empowering uh, people with skills and knowledge to excel at what they do. And so that is what we do. Uh, we do that for corporate organizations who want to develop their staff teams. We also do that for SACO memberships who uh, want to invest in something and they need some entrepreneurial skills or they need some advice on a strategic direction. And we also do that with individuals who want to scale up their career, people who are uh, probably in a profession and they need some career coaching. So that's what we do. So, so how did you begin? Was it something you always wanted to do or did it stem from somewhere else? Um, it's not really something I've always wanted to do, but as you grow, you learn and you begin to realize the things that energize you and the things that make you happy. So in my last employment, I was in charge of uh, something called leadership development. My work was to ensure that uh, the staff members around me are able to grow from point A to point B. My work was to ensure that they're equipped with the necessary skills and knowledge they need to become better at their job. And so when I did that job for a few years, I realized this is what I was passionate about. What I've always been passionate about is empowering other people with resources, you know, be it financial, be it um, knowledge, be it skills at this point in time. And so for me, a game is a vehicle that is fueling my passion to empower others so that they can become better. Is there like a course in college that leads you to this job? Um, yes, you can choose to do a leadership course. Okay. Um, there are courses in universities called leadership development because that's what corporate training is all about, growing leaders, improving people in the marketplace. So yes, there are courses you can do in the university. Uh, if we go back to the beginning, mm -hmm. what, what, what made corporate training to be a thing? What gaps in the market were identified? For, for there to be corporate training? I think first and foremost, today's customer is very demanding. They know their rights, uh, they know what they are paying for, and they want value for what they are paying for. So many employers began to realize that they need to keep their customers happy. Um, and because there are so many products in the market, customers today have choices. You don't have to buy one particular loaf for the rest of your life. If you're unhappy with that loaf of bread, there are many options to choose from. And so employers and organizations have realized they need to keep their clients happy. And not only happy, but loyal. And so because of that, I think organizations realize that they need to work through their staff to make sure that their, their customers are happy. Because if you have happy employers, you have happy customers. Yeah, that's as easy as it is. And so they began to realize that for us to make sure our customers are happy, then what can we do with our employees so that they make our customers happy? I think that's one of the ways uh, in which corporate training uh, became popular, especially with uh, customer service training development. Yeah. Some would say maybe isn't college education enough? Isn't before you're employed, maybe they need some experience. Isn't that experience enough? Four years of college, maybe you've You've done your master's, that is like six years. Isn't that enough? I think one of the things in life that you can never stop doing is learning. Okay. Secondly, information is always evolving and changing. You can't say that the kind of journalism you studied four years ago is the same exact content that is being delivered now. Things are changing. Technology is changing a lot of things. And so people need to continue learning. That's one. Secondly, knowledge is something you have to continually refresh. You know, uh, it's easy sometimes to forget what you learned. It's easy to lose track of what you learned. And I think the most important process of learning is application. What corporate training does is not like lecturing. You don't come into a room and you lecture people and you leave. With corporate training, you actually walk with them through a journey 
of celebrating milestones through a journey of growth and through a journey of overcoming challenges. So it's a very practical. It's not just about the teaching. Yes. Um, it's not just about teaching. More about the application. And yes. The results that you get from that application. Yes, and ensuring that this person you're training, you're not just delivering content to them, you're also walking a journey with them to see them achieving the goals that they want to achieve. And when they achieve those goals, that's not the end. You're always setting new targets and you're always growing. So a corporate trainer works with an organization or an individual through that process. It's more like a coaching okay. a process, yeah. So you work with them for, for a very long time, evaluating what they need yes. and what, where they need to get to. Yes, for example, we do have clients who probably will say that they want uh, to develop a strategy. And you know strategies can are mostly long term. If you're setting a strategy for the next five years, that means you have to set goals in between on how to achieve the strategy or the vision that that company wants to achieve. So you can't just walk in, help them develop a strategy for a week probably, come up with values, come up with goals on how to achieve the strategy, and then disappear. Within three months, you have to come back and tell them, okay, the milestones that we set for the next 90 days, have you guys achieved them? If not, what, why? why did you not achieve them? If you achieved them, then can we set goals for the next three months? Yeah. It's a, it's so a it's a process. process. It is yeah. a process. Most people maybe think you can do a training for a month and then you are set to go. And also, employers keep employing new staff. So you might train uh, this particular customer service department. Within six months, things have changed. They have developed new products, new services, and they have different customers. So you have to keep um, applying the knowledge of customer service based on the products and services and evolving it, depending on the things they are now providing to their clients. Okay. Speaking, of, speaking of changing employees or yes. new employees coming in, mm -hmm. like what is the return of investment on, maybe say, a company that mm -hmm. trains for a very long time and then it reaches a time that the employee wants to go. What I always say is you can never own an employee. Yeah, true. Uh, secondly, you should always be happy for an employee who is becoming better. And that's a very difficult thing to do because you've invested in them. Yes, you have. But I always say you would rather have an employee out there mm -hmm. saying I worked for a game and a game is one of the best employers in this country. That rather than having an employee out there who is saying, I hated that place and that is why I left. If you invest in your employees and you make them feel like they're the best at what they do, then even when they go out there, they become the best mouthpieces for your organization. So it's still an investment in your brand. Uh, and it's still very important to know that, as I said at the beginning, happy customers, happy employees, happy customers. If your employees are happy, they will rarely leave. Yeah. especially not as fast as they should. Yeah, because you've invested, in because you've invested in them, they are happy, they feel that they are valued, and they feel that you are interested in them beyond what they can offer you. Yeah. You're interested in their personal lives. You're interested in their personal development. You're interested in the health of their family. Uh, you're interested in the health of the environment uh, of the organization which they work with. Those employees rarely leave as soon as you would expect them to leave. They will stick it out with you for some time because they are happy yeah, and those who are not yes and i think another lie we've believed is that it's about money people prefer dignity you can pay people as much money as you want but if you treat them badly they can leave that job and go for a cheaper paying job that expect. makes them feel valued yeah. that's the most important thing to remember you said you've been in the industry for like two years. Yes. Uh, how have the challenges evolved? Did you have challenges getting into the market? Yes. And how have they evolved? Okay. Since um, my biggest challenge, I think, at first was I did not have enough experience. Okay. Because I had not diversified my experience. I only did little training within the organization I worked for. And that was very narrow. And so one of the challenges I faced was inexperience. And this is an industry that relies a lot on word of mouth marketing, referrals, and credentials. When people ask you for your company profile, they want to ask, see how many companies you've what? trained. Yes, they want to see what these companies have said about your training methods. They also want to see how many years you've done this. They also want to see what paperwork you have to support this career that you're doing. And so for, for me at the beginning, that was a challenge. But luckily, I, I got um, 
a mentor in the training industry who is more experienced than I. And what this mentor did, he told me, look, if this is the industry you want to get into, come under my company and train as an associate trainer. So he had many clients and he would tag me along when he's going for a training. And he would tell me, you'll train the afternoon session, you'll train this, and he would give me the content. And that gave me a lot of exposure because I was able to take those clients of his and use them as my referrals. Yeah. yeah, so that grew me. That was my biggest challenge, I think, at the beginning. Secondly, uh, it's easy to think that uh, corporate training is a business that doesn't need you to capitalize it. You think it's just about you. All you need is to appear in front of people and train. But you forget there are so many costs that go into starting a business like that. A business like that needs presence digitally. Most people will hear a game and quickly run to see if there's a website or if there's a Facebook page, or if there's something that can show them a bit of the work you've done. A business like that relies on things like company profiles, you know, that show what you do and, and, and the companies you've worked with. Uh, a business like that requires something like uh, NITA registration, yeah? That's the government's way of regulating the quality of trainers in Kenya. That comes at a fee. So a lot of had not considered a lot of that, and I didn't capitalize. Yes, so I really struggled in terms of finances to just be able to kickstart the business. Yeah, those are my two challenges. As time went by, um, as time has gone by, I think the challenge personally I'm facing now is standardization of content. I don't have employed trainers under a game, full employment. I work with outsourced trainers. Now, the challenge with that, which um, I'm really putting a lot of effort to overcome, is that I may give them the content, they may have the proper content, they may know how to deliver very well, but because they are not full-time employees, they may not uh, completely deliver in an exemplary and quality manner, as I would like, to, or as I would deliver personally. Secondly, they have their own content that they've built. Yeah. Sometimes they may choose to use that content instead of the content you've given them. Yes, and that takes away um, a lot of quality or it can even throw off a client because you taught them something different last time and now the content has changed. But I think it's very important to allow them to be autonomous because that's how people grow. But secondly, to just be able to set structures on how there can be some form of uniformity in terms of delivery. So that's my biggest challenge at, mm -hmm. at the moment. And are you are working to get your own, your own people so that um, you don't have to outsource them. Is it something you it's, foresee in future? Honestly, it's honestly not something I would like to do in future. For these reasons, I think there are a lot of good trainers out there. But most of the trainers out there have their own companies. Yeah, they have their own dreams that they are pursuing. Secondly, paying a trainer is very expensive. It's not cheap to retain a trainer within your offices. So I see myself doing the outsourcing for quite a while. And these trainers that I work with are my partners. You know, I don't just pick anyone from the field and use them. There are specific people that I've gotten into contracts with to work with. And so I don't see myself uh, getting into permanent. Mm -hmm. What I think I would do permanently is get core office staff, administrators, marketers. Uh, those are people I, I would work on getting because at the moment I'm doing everything um, in terms of administration and marketing on my own. Yeah. So the challenge of, of, of your trainees giving their own content, how do, you, how, how do you deal with that? Or how do you hope to deal with that? Um, so that there's no disconnect between what you, you are... You are, you are you are promising your client and what the trainers will give us. What I do is I give them the necessaries. If a trainer is going to train on communications, uh, I give them the necessaries. For instance, the communication channels, you know, uh, communication decoding and coding, you're a journalist, you know that. There are things that are basic when it comes to a communications course. And so I make sure I send them the basic information. Now, how they put the meat around it, the illustrations they use, the life stories they use, the activities they use, I leave that to their it's creativity. Up to it's up to them. Though, of course, there are some who you'll say, please send me um, your content. Let me see how you've put it together. Let me see what kind of activities you've put around. Let me see what kind of... Um, group discussions you brought, let me see how your content looks like, then I'm able to guide them. Yeah. 
All right. Uh, let's talk about technology and its place in what you do. Yeah. Is it advantageous? Is it disadvantageous? How, how do you use technology? I think um, we are not going to achieve anything in the near future without technology. And so anyone in any industry must begin to embrace technology. And, and that's necessary for, for anyone to keep relevant. Technology has played a huge role in uh, corporate training. A lot of companies, especially in the West, are opting to take up online courses rather than to physically bring in a corporate trainer. Of course, that's cheaper because you'll sit your staff in a room and play a YouTube video or play a podcast and someone will be talking at them and then they'll answer questions. And it's much, much more affordable for many companies. And so that has helped those companies who may not have the financial muscle to bring in a trainer. Secondly, um, technology has helped in terms of social media. Okay. Platforms like LinkedIn are very important towards professional development. I have learned a lot through LinkedIn. A lot of articles from very successful business, businessmen are put up there for free. And so there's a lot of knowledge out there in, in the internet because of technology. So I believe that's one of the ways that has really grown the industry especially in reaching the millennial worker. <laughs> because the millennial worker is young, they want their information delivered in a precise manner, quickly. They want to walk along the streets with earphones and listen to a podcast by Bill Gates, and they want to learn something. And they feel if I sit down for six hours and learn from you, I'm wasting a lot of my time. And so, of course, it has helped in a lot of ways. And any corporate trainer will need to begin to figure out how to tap into that market uh, sooner or later. Sooner or later. Yes. yes. Very yeah. true. We will be going on a short break. Uh, when we come back, we're going to talk about what exactly corporate training involves. Like, is there like human resource, communication, communication and, and such like things? Don't go away. <laughs>